everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and I'm back after a bit of a break. Um, August has been a bit crazy around here, but I'm back and hopefully this can continue to be a regular thing again with live shows at 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday afternoon. So that's the plan. Today I'm excited to do a fun back to school sewing project. It's perfect for those of you at home doing school or those of you in school doing school. It's a handy little organizational tool. So today we will be making a pencil case that goes in a three ring binder. And this is a fun project. Last week I sewed up several of them because we had like six of these little guys on our back to school lists. And so um, I was, you know, sewing up a few of them, trying out my pattern, and um, it was a fun, fun thing to get going. So let me just go ahead and do a couple things here, get my shares done, and then we are going to sew this pencil case and it's going to be fun. So I have, August has been crazy around here. Um, we, I don't even know why, but you know, it just, there was a lot going on. And today is the first day of school here in Colorado. So my kids are off this morning. I actually spent two hours in the school office um, helping out there and then I came home and now I'm like trying to get my head wrapped around being here with out everyone else because it's been a long time um, since I've been home uh, without all the kiddos so that is what we are up to and like I said we're gonna be sewing a um, just that did not do what I wanted it to. We're gonna be sewing a um, pencil case that you can put in your three ring binder. And this is super helpful for organization, whether you are um, at school, in school, or doing school at home, can totally be an organizational tool that you can use for either one of those things. So hopefully it's something that you can find handy um, no matter what you are doing and it I'm trying to like tag myself in this video on my computer and it keeps tagging my group and not me so sorry it's just taking me okay there it went so okay let me do this real quick and then we should be able to get started so I am happy to be back here with you guys today and um, Sewing. I hope you are all doing well, staying safe, having a good August. It is hot here, so we've been, of course, trying to stay cool, even though the pools and all that. Yes, oh my goodness, 105. It is crazy. So, in the um, the beginning, the first week in August, or maybe it was the end of July, the kids and I went to visit some friends in Northern California. Um, like way north of Sacramento and it was hot. It was over a hundred every day. And in fact, um, I don't remember who it was, but someone had sent me, uh, are you going live today? And I realized we were actually on top of a mountain in Northern um, California hiking with our friends. And I hadn't even thought one bit about that it was Wednesday. So, and then since then it's just been a wild roller coaster, getting the kids ready and um, getting things done around here. So. I took off the last few weeks, but I am glad to be back here and hopefully we can settle into some sort of a fall routine and get going. So I don't have a finished project to show you today because I've sent them all off to school, but I'm sure you've all seen their pencil cases with a zipper. Usually they have a clear window and they have three, um, they have three holes for, to go in your three ring binder. Okay, so that is what we're gonna be making today. I'm gonna show you what you need to make this. It's a fun and easy project. You might even have a number of the items laying around the house if you've done other projects, and this is great because you could use it with scraps. So um, the first of all is you don't need very much fabric. Um, you can probably get away with a fourth of a yard or a fat quarter or scraps to make this. So I've already cut out the pieces. So we have one 
um, large back piece. We have two side pieces and we have one top um, piece. I don't think it really matters what fabric you use for this. However, I didn't finish the inside edges. So a fabric that has a little bit of body, this is a ripstop fabric with these, well, I guess they cut off all their heads. <laughs> these cute little girls on it. Um, something that maybe won't fray and maybe has a little bit more body. So some canvas or wax canvas, um, any of those things are gonna be great um, to make this. And then you also, if you want the clear window, you need a bit of clear vinyl. And the dimensions for all these pieces are in the free downloadable pattern. So I've got um, pattern pieces that you can go ahead and um, print and then cut out, or the first page of the pattern, if you just wanna print page one, has all of these in dimensions. So if you wanna cut them just with measurements, you can go ahead and get those that information on the page one of the pattern. So the tutorial that's in the link here gives you the step-by-step -step of how to what I'm gonna to do today. Also gives you the link over to my shop if you wanna download this free PDF pattern. So those are what we need and then a zipper. And I'm gonna use this yellow one because sometimes when you buy those mixed bags, you don't really know what to do with some of the colors. So there's a yellow zipper. And then the other thing you need are um, these are some grommets to put in um, to make our three hole for the, the binder, um, what do you call them? The binder things to go through. Um, let's see, this is stuck together. So each one is two pieces, a front and a back, and I'll show you how we put those in there in a moment. Uh, those of you that if you don't have this around and you're like, I don't want to buy a bunch of those just to make one project, I'm also guessing that you could make buttonholes and then cut it open and then put the buttonholes in your binder as well. So um, I haven't tried that, but I think that would totally work. So uh, I hate I hate buttonholes, or I'd show you, <laughs> but not my favorite thing to do. So I don't really want to make three buttonholes for you. Uh, but we can make this bag. Um, Okay, so we are going to um, begin putting this together. Oh, thank you, Faylene. Yes, if you haven't seen, my website got a makeover. It's the same thing, same information. It's all there. It just hopefully looks pretty and is easy for you to find what you're looking for. All right, so we are gonna start assembly and then we'll move over to the sewing machines with the clear vinyl and the two side pieces. And that's how they're labeled um in the tutorial and the pattern pieces is the sides i just was at hobby lobby this morning and picked up a half yard or is this a third of a yard of clear vinyl so um you can get it in different weights but it's really handy and i like to keep a little bit on hand um to do a lot of things with it so if you can't find it look in the large upholstery roll section of your fabric store. So that's where this was on a huge roll and I just took it and I asked for a third of a yard and she cut me this little um, strip. So uh, take that and you can also order it off Amazon I think, but clear vinyl is handy to have for some of these projects. Okay, so I'm going to clip and clips are great when you're working with vinyl or some of these thicker fabrics. Um, because you don't have to push the pin through there. Um, but I'm going to put these sides on the short sides of the clear vinyl, lining up the edges. The fabric pieces are slightly longer than the clear vinyl, um, but we're gonna do that. And I made sure that the girls are both facing up because this is directional fabric, but normally it wouldn't really matter. Okay. So let's swing around here. And this is a project that you can sew all entirely on a regular sewing machine, which is nice for those of you who, um, you know, want just a project you can make on your basic machine. And I use a straight stitch for most of this project. Um, we'll see if we need to do anything else. So I did just start with a regular needle 
And if you feel like it's having a hard time going through the fabric that you're using, you might want to upgrade to a heavy doodle needle, duty needle or a denim needle, something like that. The other thing that you might need, and let me just pop over here and grab some, is sometimes your machine doesn't love sewing this clear vinyl, okay? Because sometimes it really gets stuck in the feed dogs. So a great tip, that's not ripping very well, is um, to go ahead and put some tissue paper underneath your fabric when you sew, and that will allow your machine to sew right through and right over that clear vinyl without it getting stuck. So if, if I don't use the tissue, you would see that I'd probably really have to be pulling this through, um, maybe with a lot of force in my hands. And if you find that it's sticking to your ripstop or your canvas or whatever else you are making, you can also put a piece of tissue on top. And I like using tissue because I can actually see through it to see where I still want to stitch. And then it rips off really easily when you're finished. And we're left with just um, our nice seam through the clear vinyl and our fabric. So we'll sew both sides and then I'm gonna top stitch this over to really secure it in place. Hey Cindy, so I am making a um, little pencil case with a clear window um, so you can see what's inside and it has holes so you can put it in your three ring binder. So kind of a little bit of back to school sewing and um, this is great because it's just an organizational tool and it's perfect whether you're doing school at home this year or whether your kids are in school, everyone needs binders and pencil cases. All right, so now we have that sewn on either side and I'm gonna see if I can top stitch without it sticking too much. Let's see, so I'm folding the seam allowance back over to the fabric and I'm gonna stitch that right down to secure everything in place. And it seems to be going through okay and not getting stuck on the vinyl. So if I felt like it was catching too much, I'd wanna go ahead and use my tissue again for that. But just back stitching it makes every, you can see how this side now lays so much nicer than that side. So I like to top stitch um, very close to the edge, you know, an eighth of an inch really nice and close and get that all lined up so that you can go ahead and have that there. So it's good to see you guys back too. I kind of at the beginning of this just shared how it's been really busy and um, we've been getting ready. My kids are actually back to school. So it's just kind of been a wild August. And like I mentioned, the fabric strips are slightly longer than the clear vinyl. And so now I'm just trimming those sides to even it all up. And now I have a rectangle, a nice rectangle with a nice big um, window here so we can see what's inside. All right, so the next step is we are going to sew this top piece on top. So we've done the sides, we're gonna frame it in with the top and again, because I'm using directional fabric, I want to make sure that my girls are going the right way up. And I'm gonna line that up all across the top. This piece is also a little bit longer, so you can easily just trim that. Um, and then we'll sew this. So again, um, because I've got all this, um, clear vinyl underneath. I'm going to stick my tissue under to hopefully have it feed through easier. Barbara, sounds like your machine might need a little bit of a cleaning if it's not cutting those threads cleanly anymore. So I don't know if you've ever done, opened it up and looked at your thread cutter, but um, it is kind of a mess in there and sometimes there's a whole bunch 
of little short threads that get caught in that thread cutter and I think keep it from cutting the threads, both layers of the thread. So I would start by opening up your machine and really cleaning out all the lint and seeing if there's a bunch of threads in there that look like they don't belong. And then if that doesn't take care of it, then you'd probably want to take it in and get it serviced and have that figured out because that's, that's not fun. It's not worth it if it only cuts one side. Oh, Lois, I don't know if I'm going to make this dress. <laughs> I really have liked these dresses, but I don't, I, I'm not sure. I'm not making any promises about a pattern, <laughs> but maybe, maybe. Okay. So now we have this top piece. And I'm going to top stitch that the same way as I did the other ones. And on this pattern, I have kind of just top stitched and um, sewn as I go along. And again, I'm pushing the seam allowance over to the fabric, not to the vinyl, because then we don't see it anymore. So that seam allowance just kind of disappears and gives us a nice clean window here um, that we'll see through. So again, I'm not finishing these seams on the back, which is why I suggest using a non-fray fabric of some kind. So whatever that looks like for you. Ripstop, this is ripstop. Um, a canvas, a coated canvas or a wax canvas, all of those um, should work for this. All right. Now we have this and we are going to sew in the zipper. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is of course go ahead and change out to our zipper foot. Okay, and then the right side of the zipper goes towards the right side of the fabric and I'm going to use my clips again and clip it along the top of this piece that we attached here on the vinyl. I like to extend the zipper on both sides because I want my pull tab to go all the way to the edge. So if I line it up over here, you know, there's usually a bit of a gap before the, where the zipper teeth stop. Um, so this is a 14 inch zipper and it's only 11 inches. My pouch is only 11 inches. So I like to suggest getting a little bit longer zipper so you can extend on both sides. And then this is a plastic zipper so it's really easy to trim um, when you are finished. This is the Brother LB5000, which is a combo sewing and embroidery machine. And um, so it has an embroidery unit that you can attach if you want. But today we're just using the sewing. I like this is, machine has proven to be very tough for me and has been able to sew a lot of different fabrics and textures and um, you know overall overall is a great all-in-one sewing machine so that is what I'm using here and again this is a project that can be done all just on a basic sewing machine so you don't need anything fancy to sew today's project Okay, so there is one side of our zipper installed and I'm going to just continue my sewing and then top stitching by top stitching this side of the zipper. Okay, so seam allowance towards the fabric again, not towards the zipper. Stitching nice and close to the edge of the fabric and it appears that my little girls on this part of it are have their heads all cut off. So I guess I didn't really pay attention. We just have the bottoms of their dresses along the top of that zipper pouch. Okay, so now we, we've assembled this all the way around. It's looking pretty good. And what we are going to do is take our back piece, okay, which is the largest piece, and we're going to sew it to the other side of the zipper. So I wanna think about this because I'm going to sew it like this and then I'm gonna fold it over. So I wanna make sure you know that my direction is going in the right way. This is a rectangle, it's 10 by 11. 
So just make sure that you don't have it the 10 inch side up, that you have the 11 inch side up so that you can um, sew along there. So I just am gonna line that up with the rest of the fabric that I have going. Put my clips along there. I'm gonna move this pull tab a little bit out of the way to get started. Okay, and then I'm gonna sew the zipper on there. You can see on the back, it's starting to come together. Switch the side of my zipper foot again. And then when I get here where I move the pull tab, I need to lift my presser foot. I don't like to move my needle. I try to keep my needle in place um, so that it holds everything down. But if I lift my presser foot, usually I can slide that pull tab past it. And then now we're just attaching the rest of that side of the zipper, right side of the zipper towards the right side of the fabric. Okay, and we're opening it up. And now we will once again top stitch. Kathleen, I have had this fabric for forever. Um, so I don't know if you followed me years ago. We lived in Hong Kong. And when we left, I went to some of my favorite Hong Kong fabric markets and I stocked up. And this is actually fabric still from that stock up. So I have no idea where it came from because it came from a fabric market where nothing was labeled. <laughs> but it's ripstop fabric. So you could look for, um, it's actually ripstop fabric that's coated a little bit on the backside. So it has a little bit more um, stability than your normal ripstop. Because ripstop can be quite thin, but this has the grid of ripstop and then a coating on the back of a um, more waterproof fabric. So it's definitely good for bag making. All right, so now, We've got a really cute um, pencil case started here. What I did, just to give it a little bit more definition, is have you, well I guess we wanna, I, we, I'll talk about this and we'll flip it right side out. But we want about a half inch of the fabric to extend above the zipper, just to give that um, zipper a little bit more definition. I don't want it right on the top, okay? That's not where I want it. So we're going to actually flip it this way so we can sew it right sides together. And I'm gonna move this pull tab out of the way. But so I'm gonna have about a half inch folded there and then clip it and then continue to clip down the sides here where I will sew. Um, I did get pretty good fabric in Hong Kong. It was hit or miss. Some things you could find and some things you absolutely couldn't. So. I was at Hobby Lobby this morning and I just actually really appreciate being able to pop into a fabric store, grab the three things I need and pop out, not like dig through bins and hit up five stalls along the way and still not find what you want. So when I did find some things, you know, I just would stock up not knowing what I would ever use this fabric for. Um, but if you were looking for something specific, it wasn't always great and finding like knit fabric for t-shirts that seemed to be a bit rougher so it was definitely um a good experience though all right so now i'm going to sew down the sides here and we can turn it right side out easily because we don't have anything sewn on the bottom you can see i'm sticking my hand um, inside there so i like to be a little bit generous more generous with the seam allowances on the side simply because that is going to hold everything together. I've moved my pull tab out of the way. The end of my zipper is off my fabric, so I actually have, you know, I just was able to sew over the plastic teeth of the zipper pretty easily. You can feel the plastic of the fabric catching a little bit, but not too bad on the underside. So I'll just go ahead and we'll trim that in a moment. But let's sew this other side here. Okay, and it's, 
touching a little bit. Maybe I should have stuck my tissue under here. I think it's okay. So we're gonna go up. So over the other side of the zipper. And then we can take our scissors and go ahead and trim nice and close to that seam allowance. This will be on the inside of the bag. So if you're really particular, you could go ahead and like fold it open and top stitch or do French seams or, you know, there's, there's a variety of ways you could finish these seams. I'm just choosing not to because it's not gonna fray and um, no one is really gonna see the inside of these seams. But there is clear vinyl here, so I wanna make sure that I trim these threads so that they don't peek through our clear vinyl window. So now we can go ahead and turn this right side out and get a good picture of how our pencil case, our pencil bag is going to um, look. Um, Dawn, so I was at the beginning when I was sewing with, when I was sewing where the clear vinyl is, I was actually using tissue paper under the clear vinyl to sew so that the tish, this vinyl doesn't catch on my feed dogs. So the feed dogs are those little teeth under your machine that pull your fabric. And sometimes fabric that's sticky or a little bit plasticky can really get caught up in there and it does not glide smoothly through your machine, which makes your stitches look off and causes a bit more of a headache. So um, if you just stick tissue paper under there, it really um, helps it glide and then the tissue paper just rips off because it's so thin. So that's what I mean by tissue. I did not use it on that last one, but if you find that your fabric is not um, feeding through your machine, you can go ahead and try that. It's an easy little hack um, that hopefully will help your fabric slide through your machine nice and easy. Okay. So I'm poking out those top corners. All right, so this looks really snazzy, right? Here we go. See those, those threads in there. Um, so now we have to finish it. So you can see the bottom, I have some, the clear vinyl ends here, and you should have about an inch and a quarter still extending off, okay? Yes, this would be great for leftover fabrics from swim bags. It would be perfect for this. Okay, so down here is where we are going to put in those grommets or those buttonholes so that this can go in your three ring binder. So I'm going to put a piece of interfacing down here just to reinforce this so that when I cut and I poke through that fabric to put the grommets, it's really nice and sturdy in there. So I'm gonna just swing this over here and grab, I actually just purchased some more interfacing. I bought some really cute fall fabrics too. I got suckered in, let's see, but I was out of my medium weight interfacing, which, oh, I already put that away, actually. Okay, so the interfacing um, measurement is also in the tutorial. Um, it's about one inch by 11 inches is how you um, how wide you wanna cut it, or one by 10 maybe. Okay, and then we take this and we're going to lay this in here. So you can fuse it or not fuse it, it's up to you. We're gonna sew it. Um, I didn't plug in an iron, so I'm not going to fuse it to my fabric. Plus this is kind of plasticky fabric, so you have to be a little bit more careful. This keeps wanting to fold in. So I'm just going to clip that out. Okay, so let me turn this towards you so you can see what I'm doing. But so if you if you fuse your interfacing to the fabric, it should go um, and it should have like a quarter inch on both ends and it should also have a quarter inch at the bottom because what we're going to do is we're gonna fold in the side, we're gonna fold up the bottom and then we're going to fold up that piece. And here's where I really wish I had big clips, but I don't, I only have small ones. 
but it, those of you with big clips, you could clamp sort of all the way up in here, but my clips aren't long enough, so I have to make my pins work. So I'm folding over a fourth inch seam allowance, then folding up about an inch, and we're creating that bottom of the bag. And this is nice and thick down here. So it's one layer of fabric, one layer of interfacing, and I'm also folding it up over the vinyl. So it's one layer of vinyl. So the chances of this ripping out as we're using it in our binder are hopefully very slim. That's at least my um, goal. And then when we get to this side again, we fold in that side edge, fold up the top, and then make it make it look nice and then hopefully fold it up okay the side is not going to fold in so nice i am making a three ring binder pencil case so this pencil case and is going to have three holes here in the bottom so you can stick it in your three ring binder Put all your pencils or scissors or other things in there, and then it can be part of your school organization. So many schools have these with the three holes on their back to school shopping lists. And I know my kids did, which inspired me to sew this last week. Um, but if, even if you're homeschooling, this is a great organizational tip because your things not only stay in your binder, but they also stay together. So I love this. So, okay, the last part of sewing is we are gonna go over and we're gonna top stitch along where my pins are here to stitch that fabric down. And then we'll come back over here and install the three grommets to have our rings. Okay, let me get you down there. Okay, so this, now I'm just, whoa, lead foot, top stitch along here securing that fold and again I'm stitching through um, two layers of fabric a layer of the vinyl the clear vinyl and that interfacing is also inside there so we're kind of securing all of that together here And then we have, so this bottom part is not part of the bag. That's actually part of the binder. And um, we're going for, for that. So um, Joyce, no. So you don't have to buy the vinyl foot as I was just sharing my workaround to not having a vinyl foot or not using a vinyl foot is to put tissue paper underneath when you're sewing with the clear vinyl and then it helps it slide through. So a vinyl foot is also very helpful, but if you don't have a vinyl foot, um, or you just have other fabric that's not vinyl that sometimes gets a little bit sticky in your machine, you can go ahead and use some tissue paper and that will help it um, slide through nicely as well. Okay, let's uh, put in our grommets, okay? So I have these here. And you need a sharp pair of pointy scissors to poke that hole. And um, I don't have a clamper thing, so I use a hammer to set it. So if you need that, grab all those tools. Um, the first thing you wanna do is mark where our holes are going to be. So if you um, want to mark out where, you wanna mark it. So the printable pattern has See if I can fit myself and this on here. The principal pattern has, hmm, there you go, has the measurements for you on here. Um, but I know that you need to put it in the center. So the first one gets marked in the center. Okay, so the first hole we put right in the middle. And the other two holes get um, three-fourths of an inch from the edges. So I'm using the grid on my mat to mark those, okay? So one in the center, the other two on the sides are three-fourths of an inch. If you have a binder, you can go ahead and do this. If you're not using a standard three-hole binder, this is for like an American standard three-hole binder. If you're not using that, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and mark 
where your binder clamps are on your binder before you go ahead and do this. I know like A4 binders, probably a little bit different. Um, so just, you know, double check, or you're using a two hole binder, double check that before you get started. Um, uh, Judy, what was the problem? Do you know what the problem was in downloading that? So the oversized hoodie is just a pattern hack on my regular women's hoodie. So the regular one is more fitted. The oversized one has a tutorial showing you how to enlarge and oversize the women's regular hoodie. So what you're actually downloading is the women's regular hoodie and then you're looking at the oversized tutorial to enlarge it and make it oversized. So I hope that helps. If you have more questions or specific concerns about downloading it, please go ahead and email me, um, and especially photos of what you're seeing, because sometimes people say, I can't download it, but I don't really know what you're seeing or where the problem is. So the more information that you can give me, the more I can try to help you download it, right? So I just took my really sharp scissors and I poked it right through all the layers of the fabric and now I'm trying to cut a small circle to put my grommet piece in. So you don't wanna make it too big because then it's, it's easy for it to slide and pull out. But if you don't make it big enough, you can't even get it in. So, you know happy medium. So I like to take this smaller piece and poke that through, okay, so that it slides through. So from the front to the back, whoop, there it is. So you can see, got that. And there's on the front. And you take the back piece And put it on and it has this little plastic piece where you put the back on and then you have this little piece you put on the front and then you give it a couple good whacks and then <laughs> it's set so there's the back and there is the front okay so now we have to do this two more times um judy i will go ahead and check that button when i finish this i'm happy to do that um, you can go ahead and go to my shop, which is the tab shop, and then the free patterns, and you can find just the women's hoodie and download that. And then you can use um, the women's hoodie and the tutorial and the oversized hoodie to create the look. So that's your workaround to the button not working, is just go find, that button should take you to the shop, but if it doesn't, just go search in the shop yourself and find it, and then use the tutorial. So hopefully that helps, but I will check the button. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Okay, one more hole, and let's cut. I'm gonna cut the last two holes before I put it in. So I kind of last week mass produced about five of these and it really took me maybe two hours to make five of them. Um, so it wasn't that bad. Then, however, I went to the Dollar Tree and I saw them for a dollar. So <laughs> I'm hoping mine will last a little bit longer than the dollar version and they're cuter. <laughs> but I was like, oh, that's kind of disappointing when you can, when you, make something or you can buy it for a dollar it's kind of hard to make it but most of us don't sew because it's cheaper although i like it to be <laughs> affordable to sew um the other thing is i made one for my daughter if you click the tutorial link um you'll see that we did one that was out of color fabric which is black and white fabric and so she used fabric mother markers and colored her pouch in so that was really fun too. She got to be part of the project and make it with me. So I don't even think I have a binder around here to show you. Oh, maybe I do. Let me see what's down here. My pattern binder maybe. Oh, this one doesn't have a lot of space. Okay, here's where I keep some printed out patterns. But let's see if we can find the middle. 
This is a bursting, a bursting one, but it has three rings and I can open it. And so now we can see how it goes in and close it again. Okay, and so you can see how the pencil pouch usually goes in the front of your three ring binder, um, but I suck it in the middle because this is a fat, fat binder full of things. So there you go. You can put it in your binder with your school things. You can put your pencils, your scissors, whatever else in there. And then you can go ahead and have it right there. So you could also use this same tutorial and the same free printable pattern and not put the holes if you just want a pencil pouch with a clear vinyl window, which is fun too. Um, so you could use the same pattern and just have everything except for just leave this how it is and um, not put the holes in there. But can see my three holes. So this is where I'm saying I think you could put three buttonholes across the bottom of your pouch and um, put the buttonholes over the prongs of your binder. So if you don't happen to have grommets, and you're like, I don't wanna spend money to get those to make one pencil case, then go ahead and just try buttonholes. I think button, if you make them a good size, I think that will slip right in your binder um, really easily. So try it. If someone does try buttonholes, please share the photos in our group. If you're not part of my group, the Life So Savory Pattern Group is a great place to connect on Facebook and show off all the things that you're making um, and it'd be really fun. So Dawn, yes, you could put masks in here. You could write like clean or dirty. I know I sent my son off today with a bag of five masks. They all say clean and I said at the end of every day, bring one home that's dirty and we'll wash it and we'll go on with that. So yeah, things, lots of things that you can always use zipper pouches and here's a cute um, clear pocket option that I'm sure we can figure out multiple ways to use. Um, plus it has a free pattern or at least print page one and get, then get the dimensions and cut the rectangles yourself. It's not too complicated, but I appreciate you joining me today and keeping me company while I sewed. Um, thank you so much for being part of Life So Savory. Join my Facebook group if you haven't already, and I will be back next Wednesday with another fun toy sewing tutorial. And um, we uh, hopefully can have, make a lot of projects this fall. So good to see you. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.